Hi, my name is Rich Lilly with Project Leadership Associates. Today we're going to be talking about conditional access with Azure Active Directory Premium. We want to be able to leverage a common identity as the control plane for this access. Um, a lot of our organizations, a lot of organizations today have Active Directory as their single point of truth. So why not leverage that for other outside services so we don't have to actually manage multiple IDs, sometimes tens or even hundreds of IDs for users today. So in this case, we can take our on-premises Active Directory, we can leverage a tool, which we'll be talking about in just a minute, to take that identity and sync that up to Windows Azure Active Directory. Now that we have that cloud identity, we can use that identity in other unique ways, such as triggering multi-factor authentication, providing escalation of credentials, etc. This is a very easy thing to connect up to Azure Active Directory. This can either be done through a simple connection interface, which we'll show. Uh, this can be done uh, to provide self-service for users. This is huge for things like self-service password reset, self-service group manage management, and other core uh, management functions in Azure Active Directory. This can also provide single sign-on, so that when you launch a corporate application from a trusted app, uh, we're going to actually send that user in directly to the application without actually having them to enter their credentials. This can overall increase productivity and reduce the amount of time a user has spent managing their identity and access. So how do we do this? So enabling a common identity can be done very easily with a tool called Microsoft's Azure Active Directory Connect. Uh, this used to be done with Directory Sync for Office 365, which is a part, part of Forefront Identity Manager. Microsoft has taken that engine and moved it out into a, a separate sync tool called Azure AD Connect, which also now supports things like being able to automatically provision ADFS servers, as well as provision the server necessary to sync all the attributes up to Azure Active Directory. This can be leveraged to import data from either PowerShell, LDAP, SQL, or various web services and APIs. We want to be able to deliver a seamless user authentication experience. And as I mentioned, there's two different major ways to accomplish this. One, by syncing this, this information up in Azure Active Directory, we can sync a password hash. Very important to point out this is a password hash, not the actual password. So uh, in essence, it's actually a hash of a hash. So from a uh, security perspective, we don't have to worry about that being easily uh, traceable or being able to be cracked and, and get that user's password. Another way to leverage this is through Active Directory Federation services. Uh, in this case, actually, this actually leverages an on-premises Active Directory Federation server. Uh, in this case, we do have to actually maintain that server and infrastructure to support that. However, we get things like near real-time uh, authentication and communication back to our Active Directory services. Whereas the process that syncs the IDs up to Azure Active Directory happens anywhere from one to two hours. So this is a much more uh, uh, consistent process in a much lower interval. So how do we make hybrid cloud identity simple? Uh, in this case, it is Azure Active Directory Connect. So what's great about this new Azure Active Directory Connect tool is that, is that it does offer the ability to sync from multi-force, multi-domain to a single Azure Active Directory environment. Uh, prior to this tool, this was much more difficult to achieve with Directory Sync uh, or Azure Active Directory Synchronization Services. As I mentioned, Active Directory Federation Services is actually an optional component. In some cases, password sync can actually replace the need for ADFS in many scenarios. So what do you get when you have your directory in the cloud? So the great thing about this is we can integrate with up to 2,400 different uh, pre-integrated SaaS applications. Uh, this can be there uh, through so what we would call federation as a service, which also supports things like user provisioning and deprovisioning, uh, or supporting custom applications that we're publishing through our on-premises, or even through a site that doesn't even have a pre-integrated application. Uh, in this case, this allows us to integrate outside of Microsoft's supported 2,400 plus apps uh, catalog. As you can see from the screenshot, a lot of the major vendors, this is just a screenshot of a lot of Microsoft uh, supported applications that are in there today. These range from uh, uh, services like MSDN, through Salesforce, through Oracle, through AT&T, just really showing the varying range of the various SaaS applications that Microsoft has out there today. Now that we have this identity, we can also use this, uh, this cloud uh, credential as an identity plane. So what happens is as we get a request into Azure Active Directory, what's great about this is we can also trigger a multi-factor authentication. So based on the policy we have created in Azure Active Directory, we can now choose to trigger another factor based on where the user is coming in from. For example, we're going to show you in just a little bit on how we can trigger a multi-factor for any time that someone is launching Salesforce from outside the corporate walls. In this case, we can leverage multi-factor in a couple unique ways. We can trigger a multi-factor through a mobile application that launches a notification on your mobile phone that's already been pre-verified. We can also have it uh, trigger a phone call to your, your office phone or to your mobile phone uh, to make sure you are who you are as well. 
or we can trigger a text message to actually notify you via text uh, and you can re respond back to that and indicate that it is who you are. In any of these instances, if it isn't actually you, if you choose to respond as such, it'll actually continue to block uh, requests moving forward and notify the administrator there's a potential malicious attack on the account. This is actually outlining the process of a multi-factor authentication. In this case, we have users either coming in through a, an internal application or internal network, or rather through an outside network. Uh, in these various scenarios, as you can show here, tracing the, the, the token exchange, we can see the inside if we do have uh, multi-factor enabled, we can tell it to not trigger a multi-factor because we know this is a known and trusted location. If this is coming in from the outside, for instance, what we'll show you in Salesforce in just a second, we want to make sure that user is actually who they are because they're accessing sensitive information, and we want to trigger a second factor of authentication for that. Let's take a look at how we can leverage conditional access for Azure AD, uh, leveraging multi-factor authentication. First, we're going to start by taking a look at the Azure Active Directory console. If we actually go look at our, our lab Active Directory account here, uh, what we want to show is how we're first getting the user data up into our Azure Active Directory. In this case, you can see I'm already leveraging a directory sync process today uh, through our Azure AD Connect. In this case, you can see that all of our user information is populated here, as well as our group information. We can just go take a look at one of the, the user accounts just to show what type of data and what's exactly populated into Azure Active Directory. In this case, we have our uh, my R Lily uh, at PLA-Lab account. We can see we get various attributes synced up here as well. This includes information like what department I work in, where my office is located, uh, what my mobile phone number is, and other pertinent information relevant to my account. Now, what we do want to do for this user, Rich, here in this case, is, is we want to be able to trigger a multi-factor authentication if he's launching Salesforce from outside the organization. So I'm going to go over here to our applications, and as I mentioned, there's about 2,400 plus different applications in Microsoft's catalog today. So for instance, I can go down here into Add, and I can browse that, that catalog that exists today. We can choose Add an Application from Gallery, and we can see that there's, uh, again, about 2,465 applications today. Uh, in this case, we've already gone ahead and added our Salesforce.com application. So we're going to choose to scroll down to our Salesforce.com integration here. And we're going to actually choose the single sign-on. Now, in this case, I've already selected to leverage Windows Azure AD single sign-on. Essentially, what this is doing is federating my uh, organization in Azure AD to Salesforce, much like I would have to do with my on-premises Active Directory Federation services today. Think of this like ADFS as a service. So I've already gone ahead and configured this. We've already gone ahead and gotten the sign-in URL, which we can get from our Salesforce portal, as well as our certificate that we need to exchange with Salesforce as well. Now the other thing I want to do in this case is look at the attribute mapping. So in this case, by pulling in our Active Directory information, I can sync this over actually to the attributes in Salesforce. So in this case, we can see that the provisioning is actually mapping our username attributes, our address information, our title, over to our Salesforce account information. So we can also, also automatically provision these user accounts as they're added into Azure AD as well. Now for the multi-factor authentication, we're going to go ahead and look at configure here. And we can actually see in the very bottom here, there's these access rules. And this is for our multi-factor authentication. Now I'm creating a rule here for all users. Uh, and we're going to actually require a multi-factor authentication when not at work. Now if I choose the edit or define network location, uh, we've gone ahead and, and defined our class C subnet so that anytime I see an IP request coming out, or a, a Salesforce request coming outside of our corporate network, I'm going to trigger that multi-factor authentication. And I'm going to enable this rule. So what does this actually all look like from the end user experience? Let's go ahead and open up uh, our Salesforce login. Now there's two different things I want to show you here. So one, Microsoft also has the ability to publish these applications through a common My Applications portal, uh, commonly referred to as the My Apps portal. So one way to get to this application is publishing this through a single interface. You can see it's redirecting to my Azure AD login page there. And once I'm in, I'm going to get all the corporate applications that I have access to. In this case, it's about 20 different applications. We can see that Salesforce is already down there on the lower left-hand side. We're going to go ahead and choose Salesforce, and it's going to redirect me over to the Salesforce login. Uh, in this case, it's actually prompting me because it's, it's got a saved cookie already. So let's actually back out of this. In this case, we're going to launch the Salesforce.com portal that I've already got pre-assigned as my favorite. Now, as soon as we launch the portal, you can actually see it's going to come up with my projectleadershipassociates.com logo here, along with my user identity. So again, I'm going to enter in my user credentials here. 
and you can see that I can actually log directly in. Now in this case, I have a multi-factor authentication set up to my phone. So this is actually gonna call me and verify that I am who I am first. This can also be done through a text message or through a soft phone app notification on my phone. So let's take a look. So as you can see, now that our account has been verified, it's actually gone ahead and logged me into my salesforce.com portal. This wraps up our demo of conditional access for Azure Active Directory Premium. Thank you for attending our session today on conditional access with Azure Active Directory Premium. My name is Rich Lilly with Project Leadership Associates. You can reach me at rlilly at projectleadership.net or on Twitter at at Rich Lilly. Thank you.